Hi everyone and welcome to another Mighty Ginkgo tutorial. My name is Zero and I'll be your instructor for this lesson. So this is the final chapter in our From Software Suite. We're going to end things off with the latest game, Elden Ring. So I'm going to show you in this video how I like to extract animations from Elden Ring and put them into Blender. Now, I want to tell you straight off the bat so you're not confused or upset or mad that I didn't say it sooner, but this probably isn't the best method to use to go about getting Elden Ring animations. Everybody in the From Software Discord swears up and down that the best thing to use for anything Havoc is 3D Max. Now, before we even finish, their, finish this intro, I just want to apologize. My cats decided that now they want to start singing the song of their people when they were all asleep just a minute ago. So I apologize for the cat noise in the background. That's just what it is. <laughs> Alright, so while I'm issuing out warnings, I gotta say that one of the major programs that we're going to be using is the same thing that we did in our Sekiro video. And that is the paid version of... Uh, Dark Souls Animation Studio. Now this version can be found on the creator's Patreon and it's only five dollars to download it But you know normally I would just give guys out the program But these people are really nice the creators nice the discord is really nice and they have a really good cat channel that puts my pet corner to shame so I feel bad taking money away from people who are really dedicated to supporting it and developing a program nicely, you know, like unlike the people at Avastar. So fuck those guys. But these guys, we, we can't fuck them over. We got to give them their money. So um, $5 for this program. But trust me, it's really worth it because in the previous version, you would have to uh, downgrade all the animations to a lower version of Havoc and then do something or another and it was just very time consuming and it, it was a just really a waste of time but they eliminated that need and then you can just export everything uh, with just a click of a button which saves so much time so I totally recommend you guys pick it up and support the creator because you know really nice person um one of the reasons why people say that this isn't the best method to use is because when we do the conversion process, we lose the root translation and the animation. Um, what that means is, let's say you have a running animation, and when you look at it inside of Dark Souls Studio or whatever, when they run, they're moving forward. Their root bone is being animated to move forward. When we do the translation, uh, translation, the, uh, to, what do you call it? Conversion. Um, they just stay running in place, you know. And that could be good and bad, depending on what your project calls for. Personally, me doing Second Life stuff and translating and turning my animations into AOs and things like that and, and animating it in other projects, that works for me because I like to manually uh, put the person where I want them to go. I don't want the, pre, the animation to have a predestination inside there. That way, when I put it in my projects, they animate and then run off target from where I want them to be. I can choose where they go to. So that's why, for me, it's not a big deal. But for some people, it has to be exactly how it is in the game, and they want that uh, root translation. Um, so they say that using 3D Max is better because it gives you all of that data. Personally, I don't need it, don't care for it, but... You know, that's you. So if you are okay with that and you agree with all the stuff that I just said and you want to continue and learn how to do this, then let's continue on with the tutorial and get everything straight. Okay, you guys ready? Three, two, one, here we go. Okay, so the first thing we're going to need is obviously a copy of Elden Ring. I'm using a version from Steam, and you can find that inside your Steam project folder, uh, your Steam download folder. <laughs> um, normally, that's inside of mm, somewhere on the C drive, but for me, it's on my external hard drive because I did not have enough space to download Sekiro and Elden Ring and all the rest of that junk. I just discovered Steam. <laughs> I'm late to the party, but my computer could not handle that. So you want to go to wherever your Steam stuff is saved. So for me, it would be in my this and my steam library and then steam maps then common and then you see elden ring and then games <laughs> now this is where all your stuff will be now my folder looks like this because i had already extracted everything but when you do it it would just be like data 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 all you really need is this elden ring exe 
So once you find your Elden Ring folder, you're going to go into the Sekiro, me Sekiro, the Elden Ring tutorial folder, and you're going to open up this Elden Ring UXM RAR. And this is the same thing that they use for extracting stuff from Sekiro, except for it has been modified to work with Elden Ring. You need to use the version that is made for Elden Ring. If you use the old one that was for Sekiro, it's not going to work. So you got to grab the Elden Ring one, which I included inside here. So you can just open it up in a project folder and grab it. So what you want to do is open up that folder, I mean that RAR, go into your folder, and you want to select everything that's inside here and drag it into your game folder. I'm not sure if this actually is needed, but I do that just so I can keep all my tools for their game in one place so I don't have to jump from folder to folder. Everything is inside the thing. Right, so now once everything is inside the game folder, we're going to go down to the UXM and you're going to click that. And where it says executable path, we're just going to click browse, go to your game folder where you got your Elden Ring EXE, copy it into your paste, um, and then open. Oh, we're already here. <laughs> uh, and then you're going to select Elden Ring.exe. Select that and then press unpack. Now it's going to load and do its thing and it's going to take a while. So, you know, go off and do something while it works. And it's going to sit here and un pack everything that is Elden Ring. So once it's complete and done, you should get a whole bunch of stuff like folders and stuff like this. The folders that we want for our animations is the CHR folder, just like it was in Sekiro, because this holds all of our uh, characters, files, and their animations and textures. So it's just like it was in Sekiro. So if you see this, you already know, you know, if you did the last tutorial, you already know where we're going with this. Whew! Sorry. <laughs> okay, so now that we have our CHR folder extracted from the game, we are going to open up our Dark Souls Studio. Now again, this is the Patreon version of the game, so the um, icon is blue. If your icon is brown, like this one, I'm going to give it a second, like, uh, if it doesn't say that, and it's brown, then you know you got the wrong one. So we don't want that. We want the blue icon. Um, I'm not sure what features will be added into this in the, um, in the public release, but right now I know that it's only really working with the Patreon version. Um, another thing I want to say before we even start working this is that if you were to open up this program and it says that you're missing .NET, um, you need to download a specific version of .NET to make it work. I forgot, I think it's like 5 something. Um, I actually put the link inside of the project folder so all you have to do is just open it up go here and download that and you know it'll open up and run so it's not you it's just you need a specific version of dotnet on your computer for it to run so once you got dotnet all installed and you're ready to go you have the ds and studio open we can begin our extraction process so to select our um, animations we're just going to go to file open navigate to our chr folder and I like to use the very first one because C00000 <laughs> is always the player animations. So when you select that and it asks you, do you want to choose a model to load, rescans or whatever, I just say no. Wait for it to run and do its thing. Uh, I'm not sure which one. You can play with that if you want to, but I just click it. And then you see the avatar comes in. So you can press play and you can look at the animations and see what animation does what and what it does. Let me see if I got one where the root is being active. I don't know. Let's see. Of course it's doing all these non root. Okay. This is a good example. See how it's being knocked back in this bone is shifting from A to B all the way back there, that's a root animation. And then if we were to do it um, with the conversion, we would lose that. He would still be knocked back, but he won't travel back, you know? So you will have to manually do that with this version. So sorry about that. Okay, so now we see we have the character, we have our animations, and you can actually play around with other ones and see what other characters in here and their animations, but right now we're just going to focus on using the player animations. So once we choose what we, we got what we want, all we have to do is export it out. So to export, 
we would go up to the top where it says tools ah, i'm gonna stop this because i feel bad that he's getting hit okay so once we got that done we're going to hit tools and we're going to go to export skeleton and animations and click that and then you see we have the other stuff here these are options to as how we're going to save it for sorry i can say that better <laughs> once we select tools export skeleton and animations a window will pop open and it will ask us how we want to save our animation and um skeleton so the first thing first is we need to select the destination folder to where we want to save it apparently i have one created already and i don't remember doing it oh i must have did that when i was doing the testing of it <laughs> but for you guys i create a new one so we're going to go to our desktop and create a new folder and i'm going to name this new er and we're going to save our stuff here so we'll save and then save and next it says how to export as file type and i like to use the havoc 2010 XML general purpose one it will export it as an XML that can be used in havoc uh, the havoc that we're going to be using um, pack file it'll, I think it'll set it up like a Dark Souls 1 animation um, and that will be in .hkx file format and I don't know how havoc 2016 works because I only have havoc 2014 so I didn't export anything on this that I couldn't use, which I think might work for it because it says for uh, for that, but it's just, I don't have it, so I don't use it. So I'm just gonna stick with what I do have, what I do use, what did work, and that is Havoc 1020 for a general purpose. Select all the skeleton stuff here, and then we're just gonna press start export and wait for it to export. Now, this is going to take a minute to do, but um, according to just a few minutes ago, <laughs> um, we saw that I already have them exported. So we're going to pretend like this is TV magic and we have it exported already. And you see we have it here and a whole bunch of XML files because these are all animations. Cool, huh? <laughs> okay now that we have these xml's it's time for us to go and use havoc now i can't provide the download for havoc like i can't put it in this kit but i can host it give you the link where i got mine from so that's also inside of your project folder just download um click the havoc thing go to the link and download havoc 2014 that's the version that i'm using in this video so with that said once your havoc is done you're just going to open her up and wait for it to load. Welcome to Havoc. <laughs> so Havoc is our favorite little thingy to majig to get from software stuff going. And when you open it, it should look something like this. We're going to start importing our animations into Havoc so that we can export them out. This is one of the like ugh, parts of this tutorial because you have to import the, every animation you want in one at a time and export them out one at a time. So um, I think there is a script that's already out that allows you to do a bulk processing, but it's for 3D Max and you know, I don't know anything about that. So this is, again, my glorious method. <laughs> okay, so first thing we need to do in order to import our uh, animation in is that we have to establish a skeleton. So we're going to uh, go and import our skeleton first before we put the animation in by going to File, Open, scroll it on down. It's usually at the bottom where it says Skeleton. Skeleton. And wait for it, and you see that we have our Elden Ring skeleton imported. Now, before we even put an animation in, let's just save time and export our anim our skeleton out because we'll need that for our conversion process. So to save our skeleton here, we're going to go back to File and then Save As, and then change it to what the format is from HKT to XML Cross Platform. Then we're going to go to Browse, and we're going to name this um, I don't know New Skelly and hit save hit okay oh wait i forgot that was wrong i did something wrong xk xml and we want to change it to xkx make sure it's xkx and then we want to name this new skelly one then okay now we can have the fun stuff in and bring in our animation so we want to go back to the top where it says file and then add 
And then, I don't know, I'll pick a random animation, 50. Of course, that would be it. No, let's get a cool animation. I don't want that one. Something that we can, something we can feel. Like a, a good walk. Okay, yeah, that'll do. <laughs> okay, so now that we have our animation, we're going to do the same thing we did like with the skeleton. And that is to go to file, file, save, and then change it to XML cross platform, then browse. Um, hey. <laughs> and we want to save it as a X, HKX. Make sure it's HKX. It's really easy to save it as a HKT and that won't work. So we need HKX and then hit save and then hit OK. Now, I know what you're thinking. We already have our animation inside here. Let's load up another animation. But that is the wrong way to go about it. If we were to add in another animation without removing the previous animation, both of them would play at the same time. See his hand here? So if you want to do the next animation, it's really important for you to either disable that animation or just straight up remove it from here. And that will give you, you know, the next animation in your play. If you have more in it, I'll just keep playing both at the same time. Okay, doke. So once we got our animation go, it's time for us to convert this over to something that we can use. So let me hang on. Let me go and read that later. Um, so now that we have our animation exported, all we gotta do now is to put it into formats that we can use inside Blender. So let's close this because we're done with Havoc, and we're gonna go back to our Elden Ring tutorial folder and open up our Fallout Four. AK. I'm not sure what the AK stands for. I've just been calling this FAC because that's <laughs> it's just what it looks like it would be called. So you want to click the wait, wait, gossip, ignore it. Hang on one second, I'll be right back. Sorry about that. Second life gossip. Had to get in on that. <laughs> okay. So um, once we have our Fallout 4 FAC thing, we're just going to select the one that says FAC hot UI thing. It's just the blue disc with the duck. Select the blue disc with the duck. When you select it, you may get this error. It's fine. Just hit OK and it should run. So now that we are here and open up our converter, it's time for us to start our conversion process. So what we need to do is first establish a skeleton for it to work with. So go to Browse. And then we're going to navigate to our folder with all our junk inside there, our Havoc stuff. And we're going to select the new Skelly. Okay. And then we're going to drag in the animation that we have. Now, sometimes it's easier just to sort your folder by type, group it up by type. That way we can close the uh, XMLs and get them out of the way. And then we're going to find our... Um, animation that we exported so hey you can put multiple files in here but i only have the one so i'm just going to use our hey that we exported and then i'm just going to collect collect click this box that says convert hkx to fbx and watch it do its magic and when it does it shoots out a fbx now i know what you're thinking hey blender can import fbx right right but it can't import this type of fbx this fbx is so old that blender is like nah we don't hang with that we like the new fbx so you can't use it which means we have one more step to do and i swear it's almost the last one so once we have all our stuff converted we're just going to go open up our gnosis and um, I'm sorry if I pronounced that wrong. I never could say it right. Um, and we're going to open it up. I use the 64 version, but um, you can use any one I think still works. All right. So once that's done, we are going to, oh, how convenient. Um, go open file. And we are going to do something else. Where's my Elden Ring stuff? Oh, no, it wouldn't be here. It's in the old ER. And again, group by type. <laughs> and we're going to open up our FBX. So, hey. Okay. So, once you do, you see there is our animation. And we can export it out in anything that we want. This is test from when I was doing the other tutorial. Just somebody sitting... 
so once you're done we just hit export and you can save it as a fbx if you want but there's um i don't understand why it's so small and when the animation plays it shrinks down if you do it I think I'm just not experienced enough to know how to fix that. So what I do know is that if you use .dae, which is my favorite um, export, you can export it out that way. And it gives a pretty good result without it having to shrink down. Now, whatever you export out, it always exports out as your title .out. So that's why you can tell the difference between the two. Plus, it would be in day and not in FBX. Alright, so once we got that done, we can just click close, and now, finally, I feel like the rock now is finally, we can open up our blender, open up our blender, I knew I should have opened up blender sooner, and um, put the animation inside there. Come on blender, you know you want to work. All right, fine. Open up the new blender. Give it a second. There you go. There you go. Sorry about that. Now we can import our beloved blender Do -do 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 to our ER folder. And it should be hey. And there is our animation. Oh, wait. There was our animation. Uh, I broke it. <laughs> Let me import it again. There you go. And there's our animation ready to be, um, you know, retargeted to your project. So, yeah, that. Sorry it took so long to explain it. Just wanted to make sure that I got everything done thoroughly so you guys could understand me as clearly as possible. Now, I know that that took a long time, but once you do it, it should be a lot faster. And um, it's a fairly easy process. Like I said before, I know this isn't the best method to go going about this, but it works and it serves its purpose. So that's all that really matters. Maybe somebody smart who sees this can make a faster method or a tool or something that can help us process all of this faster for Blender so we don't need to use 3D Max. All right, so I hope that this helps you guys out with your projects. Any questions, comments, and concerns, please feel free to leave a comment below. I look forward to reading them. And if it helped you out, please uh, feel free to say so in the comments or leave me a simple thumbs up. I like seeing those. <laughs> All right, I got to go. We got a couple more other tutorials to do, but that's it for our From Software stuff for now. Hope you guys had fun. I know I did. And uh, good luck and see you on the next tutorial. Oh yeah, bye. <laughs>